today's episode, we're going to use procedural noise and world-aligned texture projection to create a material for rocks and cave systems. For the last few weeks, we've been looking at examples of using procedural noise, and in the comments last week, a couple of people asked me how to use procedural noise to blend materials together. So that's what we're going to do today. First, I want to start with a little bit of a backstory. My art director came to me and he said, we're making a set of modular cave pieces, and we want to be able to snap them together and create caves. But they look too modular. It's really obvious where the seams are between the pieces, and everything looks like it's made out of individual Lego bricks. Can we make a projected material that just blends across all of the seams without using UV coordinates? So here, we're looking at the results of that project. It's a cave rock material that's projected in world space. You can snap the pieces together with each other, but the material tiles at a different rate than the meshes, so the seams are hidden. So let's break down how this works, and we'll jump into Unreal and build it. First, we need to project our texture in world space. We need to project the texture from the front, the top, and the side. In some software, this type of projection is called a triplanar projection. In Unreal, we're going to be using a node called the World Aligned Texture to create this projection. But you're probably going to ask, isn't the material still going to tile? And the answer is yes, but we're going to take care of that. So we're actually going to take we're actually going to create two materials that tile at different rates and we're going to do world aligned texture projection on both of them or we'll have two materials that do triplanar projection and then we're going to blend between them using procedural noise the combination of two different materials and procedural noise that doesn't tile will break up the tiling and create a cave rock material that feels natural and seamless this is going to be cool, so let's jump into Unreal and build it. All right, so here we are in Unreal, and we want to do this in a couple of different steps. The first thing that we're going to do is go over the world aligned texture node. So I'm going to create a new node here called world aligned texture. And what this does is just like I was showing in that illustration a minute ago, you give it a, a texture object. It's important to point out here that this is a texture object, not a texture sample. So I have this texture object with my T rock basalt texture assigned. And this is just one of the textures that ships with Unreal. I'm just using it as an example. You're free to use whatever rock texture you would like. But I'm gonna plug my texture object into my world aligned texture node and what this node does is it projects this texture that I've selected in three different directions from the top, from the front, and from the side. And I can choose to export this or to get it out as XYZ, as Z, or as XY. So XY is going to project it from the front and the side. Z is going to project it from the top and the bottom. And XY is going to project it from all three. So I'm just going to plug this into the base color of my root node and we'll take a look at what's happening. Yeah, so now you can see that my texture is projected onto my cube here and you can see that it's tiling a few times. And that's because of the default texture size here. So if I pull out this wire and create a new constant vector node, a constant three vector, here, if I mouse over this port, you'll see that the default value is 64. So if I come over here and I type 64, 64, 64, this is the same as leaving the socket empty. So I'm just going to do that for now um, so that we have our texture tiled uh, in world space. All right, so you can see that I've got my material projected. And the benefit of having a projected material, just like I said before, is it's gonna cover up whatever seams you have between your meshes. As long as your meshes fit together just right and the verts snap to each other, 
uh, this um, projected material will, will project across those seams. Instead of being dependent on the UV coordinates of the model, we're projecting in world space from the top, bottom, and side. And so this will flow right across any seams that you have in your mesh. All right, so we've got our diffuse texture projected, and now we need to project our normal map. And normal maps are just a little bit more complicated, and so they actually have their own special node uh, just for normal maps. So I'm gonna type world aligned, and this time I need to uh, pick world aligned normal. So there's my world aligned normal node, and I'm gonna plug my normal map into that and my size, I'm gonna plug into the texture size. All the rest of these settings, I can just leave as defaults. All right, and from the normal map, I can pick the XYZ texture as well and plug that into my normal. And bingo, now I have a model that has a world aligned texture projection, normal and color. Now, if you're doing this, you're free to add another texture that has specular or roughness or you know whatever other settings you want. But for this example, we're just gonna use uh, a diffuse texture and a normal map. All right, so at this point, I could call it good, but as I said, uh, my art director is not gonna like this very much because you can see there's a ton of tiling. So we need to break that up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another material uh, with these two textures down here. And then I'm going to blend between those two materials using my procedural noise. And the cool thing about the procedural noise is it's in three dimensional world space. And so it'll look like there are all kinds of like veins and um, the way real rock would blend with itself. Uh, in a three-dimensional volume, that's what my procedural noise is gonna do for me. So let's go ahead and really quickly make this other material. I'm just gonna duplicate these two world-aligned texture nodes, and I'm gonna pass my second rock color texture and my second rock normal in here. And now I need a way to blend these together. So just to clean it up a little bit, I'm gonna put my diffuse textures up here with each other and I'm gonna take my normal textures and put them down here uh, with each other as well because I'm gonna need to uh, blend between my two normal maps and my two diffuse textures. And now I'm gonna add a linear interpolate node and I'm gonna blend between my first rock texture and my second rock texture. And I'm going to do the same thing for my normal map. So I'm going to blend between my first normal map and my second normal map. All right, so I've got my lerps, but I need something to use for the alpha. I need some kind of a mask in order to blend these together. And like I said, we're going to use our procedural noise. So I'm just going to add a noise node here. And just for previewing for now, I'm gonna plug this directly into my root so that we can work on our mask for a minute. And then when I'm all done, I'll plug the mask into the lerps. All right, so you can see that I'm a little off here on my scale. I need to adjust this just a little bit. So I'm gonna set the scale value to 0 0.01. And again, like I've been doing in all my other procedural noise videos, I'm gonna set this to fast gradient 3D texture. So it'll be nice and fast, so we won't have to worry about performance. I'm also gonna set my levels down to five just to reduce some of the detail, and I'm gonna turn off turbulence. All of these settings will help to make my procedural noise a little bit cheaper. Okay, you can see that I'm getting a nice result here. I've got some white areas and some black areas. Uh, there's a couple of more things that I wanna do to tune this. I want my mask to be a little bit higher contrast. And you'll notice here that I have my output min set to negative one and my max set to one. And that means these, these areas where it looks like it's black, it's actually going negative. And I can take advantage of that if I wanna increase the contrast. I can add a multiply and multiply this by four which means it's now got a range of negative four to positive four. And if I saturate it, I'm 
throwing out all the values that go above one or below zero. And so what this is going to do is it's going to give me a value between zero and one, but where anything lower than zero is cut off and just stays black and anything higher than one just stays one. And so I can use this multiply node here as my contrast value. So if I want it to be really contrasty, now it's going to be almost solid white and solid black. Uh, or if I go like super high, it's just going to be like very stark black and very stark white. But that's not exactly what I'm going for. So I'm just going to stick with four and that'll give me a little bit of contrast. Okay, now I've got the mask that I want. So I'm going to pull this guy over and I'm going to plug. Now, one other thing that I want to notice, and this is, I think I've said this before, but the, the procedural noise is using the world space position uh, as its texture coordinates. So as I move things around, just as you saw in the example video at, at the beginning, as I was moving those cave pieces around, uh, the material was being projected and the world space procedural noise was blending them together, but it was staying in its place in the world regardless of where I place the objects. Okay, anyway, so I'm going to use this as my mask and I'm going to blend uh, my two rock color textures and my two rock normals together. And then I'm going to plug in my normal and I'm going to plug in my base color. And now we have this really cool material that is a blend between my uh, two rock materials using the procedural noise as uh, as the mask and the other thing that I want to do right now they're both tiling at the same rate they're both tiling at this rate of 64 and so I'm going to duplicate this guy and plug him into the world size or rather the texture size I want to make sure that I do this correctly. So I want my rock, my first rock material to be 64. And I want my second rock material to be a different size. So I'm going to plug this one into my second material. And we'll make this one something like maybe 48. Now what's happening here is I have two materials. One's tiling at a rate of 64. The other one's tiling at a rate of 48. And then my procedural noise is blending between the two and it doesn't tile at all. And so I'm going to apply this to my modular set pieces and my modular pieces have a size that they're tiling at. And my one rock material has another size that it's tiling at. And my second rock material has a third tile dimension. And then my procedural noise, it doesn't tile. So the combination of all of these different tiling patterns results in a pattern that's really hard to make out uh, where the tiling seams are. And that's the goal. I'm trying to make something that looks natural, uh, that doesn't tile, uh, and that just looks like uh, a cave material. So that's what we've done. Now if I were to take this material and apply it to uh, my cave pieces, it would look natural and cover up my seams. Great, so we've accomplished our goal. Now, if I wanted to take this a little bit further, I could add a detail normal map, I could add a detail color. There are a lot of things that I could do, um, but I think that I've uh, demonstrated that you can use procedural noise to blend materials together and uh, create natural looking rock and cave materials. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. Uh, if you do, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the video next week.